Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In the first part of this tutorial, we looked at how to take a relatively weak sunset and make it much more fiery by using blend if on the red color channel. In this second part of this tutorial, I want to focus more on the theory of why you would use the red blend if color channel as opposed to just using the normal blend if on the gray color channel. So to do that, I've already created a test image here. I've got a background white layer. And if you want to recreate this at home, you can simply add a blue gradient. It's being masked in with a gradient going from the bottom to the top here to blend this in so you get a light blue like you'd normally see in a sky up top here and then a red gradient overlaid on that which is blending from left to right so it's transparent on the left to red on the right both of these are at 35 percent opacity and this is a zero hue for the red it's 220 hue for the blue and they are at 100 for saturation and brightness so with that, let's take a look at what would happen if we just start to blend things normally. Let's go and add a solid color layer. And let's go and grab something that looks like the sort of sunset colors we might want to normally use. So something like that would be blended in. Typically, we would go and switch it over to something like soft light blend mode. And you see how much color we're adding to a sky. For this part of the demo, let's just stick with normal to make it much more obvious what's happening. We're going to double click on the right side of the layer which brings up the layer style dialog. And in here we have the blend if settings. So if you're working with Lumenzia, you never really need to touch this, but it's important to understand what's happening here so you understand what Lumenzia is doing. These settings are going to tell this layer when it can blend. It's essentially a mask, you just don't see it. This top row is saying you can blend if the gray value, which is the gray here, is anywhere between zero and 255, which means any possible value on the top layer is fine, it'll blend. And then the underlying layer, same logic, and it's also saying anything can blend. Well, what if we want to blend this into the areas that are a little bit brighter? Because in a normal sky blend, we would want to target the highlights in the image and not be blending into the shadows. So to do that, you'd want to adjust the underlying layer by bringing up the minimum shadow value. And at some point here, we're going to start reaching the sky values. So because this is not a real image, it's pretty clipped up here before we see any change. In a real sunset, you would of course have some kind of foreground shadows and other detail in the image, but because we're only working with sky tones, we're gonna to be working on the right-hand side of the slider, but you would want to knock out the shadow values. Now notice what happens here. As we bring up this control to target just the highlights in the image, which of course we want, because we only wanna bring out sunset color really in the sunset, not necessarily in water or rocks or their foreground elements the same way, this is gonna help us target the sky, but it's hitting the red and magenta and blue areas relatively with equal amounts here. There's no bias. And what you'd want to do ideally is put much more color into the colorful red and magenta parts of the sky and not so much in the blue. Once you start adding that blue there, it starts to look a little bit washed out. You lose color contrast and it's just not as realistic. There is gonna be some blue in your sky. So we wanna push things over in this direction and that's why we're going to start using the blend if on the color channels. So let's reset this and we can take a look at, for example, the red color channel. Now, if we bring up the shadow values here, watch what happens. Once we start to clip, notice that it's cutting off the blues first. And this can be a little bit confusing because a lot of people think the red color channel is the same as red, but it's not. Notice that the white values are perfectly fine to blend here because white has a lot of red in it. In fact, the bottom left here is at 255 red because it's a pure white. So pure red at 255 red and pure white at 255 red plus green and blue components still has the same red value. So that's why blend if on the red is not the same as targeting on red, but it does tell you that you don't want blues because a pure blue color has almost no red in it. Let's cancel out of this for a second and just take a look at the underlying channels because I think that'll be helpful to explain what's happening. So when we look at the overall image here, we've got white in the bottom, red down here, blue over here, and magenta here. So we should expect to see all three color channels are pretty bright in the white. We should see a lot of the red channel for the reds. We should see a lot of the blue channel for the blues. But because both of these are impure colors, they're, they're pretty white and washed out, there's still going to be a lot of green or there's gonna be a lot of the opposite color here. So let's look at the color channels and we'll click on red. In fact, that is what we see. We see a lot of red over in the reds. We see a lot of red color channel over in the whites and we see a lot less of it in the blues, but it's still pretty bright. I mean, this is more than middle gray over here. 
So a washed out blue does have red content, just not as much as the red. Similarly, if we look at the blues, we see the opposite effect. There's a lot of blues in the blue areas, there's a lot of blue in the whites, but there's less over in the reds, there's less in the magentas. And so even though this is not a perfect black or white scenario, there's plenty of difference here that we can take advantage of with our blend if. So let's go back to the image, turn this back on, and look at how we would target this area. So if we think about it theoretically, we want areas that are going to be brighter in the image. We're gonna knock out red dark areas because any shadow values will be low in red, and the areas down here are bright in red. So that's gonna get us already down into this area. If we wanted to further refine it, we could also look for areas that might exclude this over here. And one key difference between these two areas is that there's a lot of blue here and there isn't here. So we can start knocking out the highlights to remove that. Let's take a look at how this works. So opening this up again, we'll switch over to the red color channel and start bringing up our shadow values until we get a pretty good separation. You have to decide how much you wanna lose magentas versus how much you really wanna remove blues. That's just sort of a personal preference. Every image might be different, but there'll be some right value that you can dial in here. As I said, we can further dial this in and knock out some of these blue areas by switching over to the blue channel and then removing the bright blue stuff. That means we need to bring in the highlight slider and see how this is coming in from the left. Now notice it's perfectly straight here and that's an artifact of the way that I've blended two gradients. If we'd reverse the red and blue layers here, then the shape of one would be straight and the other would be curved in the opposite fashion. But this is generally the idea here that we're going to be only allowing brighter red stuff through the red channel and we're gonna be excluding brighter blue stuff through the blue channel. Now, once you've done that, you can split the sliders. If you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can start to smear these values to get a much more subtle result, which of course is what you're going to need if you want this to look in any way realistic. But we can bring this through, and now notice we've got this really nice soft blending of color towards the bottom right. And when we put it over into the proper blend mode, now you can see how much we can punch up into the sky. And of course you can go and dial in the hue to exactly where you want it to be to make it more of a warm or more of a reddish sunset, whatever you want it to be. And of course you can play with the opacity to really dial in the effect. But by setting those sliders there, you've targeted this much more appropriately. Now, if you're using Lumentia, you've got a quick way to do that. And that is just simply click on the seller color fill. We'll say, okay, we're gonna switch over to the blend if under mode and in this case, we'll choose the red channel and something like lights three has put us down towards the bottom right. So you can see we've got nice selection of these areas over here with minimal adjustment in the blues on the top left. So that's how you can use color channels with blend if. Be sure to subscribe to this channel on YouTube as well as my newsletter at gregbensphotography.com newsletter.